Hello everyone, Scott with Heritage Farms, Texas. Well, happy 4th of July. We're back at the corporate offices and we have a project going on. So uh, full disclosure, we've been in our house about 24 years. And uh, let me tell you what, these are the original cabinets that are in the house. Uh, they were a uh, maple cabinet with a antique stain on it. And over 24 years, they're getting a little grungy, uh, out of date, if you will and uh, time to do a little refresher on them. So uh, we're getting ready to paint the cabinets in our kitchen. And not only are we gonna paint them, but then we're going to uh, put a glaze on them or an antique glaze so that like in the little cracks and crevices, it shows a little age, kind of gives them an antique look to them. So, uh, all right, hold on. So here's what the cabinets look like. And you can kind of see what we're dealing with here. and. Uh, there is a bunch of cabinets. And uh, you can kind of see we got knobs on here that we got to take off. So as you can imagine, when you you know you look from afar and you think, oh, the cabinets look okay. But boy, let me tell you what, when you get close to them, especially the ones down there, they, they got a little uh, grease and grime on them, you know, almost a quarter of a century, man. That's, that's a long time. So what are we doing? So uh, we're getting ready to start the prep work. Here's the plan of attack. We're gonna take all of the doors and the drawers off and uh, we're gonna sand the frames and we will paint the frames of the cabinets by hand, but then the doors and the drawer faces we're actually going to spray. Now you can see, and I apologize our living room, but uh, we recently did the cabinets in the uh, living room and the mantle and they turned out pretty good. But, uh, so now we're gonna tackle the kitchen. So now, to make things a little bit easier, one of the things we're doing, we're taking the uh, faces off of the drawers and to make sure we match them back up, we are actually marking them. Like this one is 12A, A means it's the top, B would be the bottom drawer. So that's the thought process, because if you start over here, this would be drawer number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, all the way over. So that's the process. So like right here where you got four drawers, that would be A, B, C, D. Uh, that's how we're gonna actually track these and try to get everything. So like the doors themselves, we'll mark these like one, two, three, four, five, blah, blah, blah. We'll put an U, uh, the letter U up there for upper, and uh, we'll put a B for bottom. So you may have a one, two, three, B or A and B. We'll, we'll figure it out. Anyway, we're gonna mark everything so that we have it. This way, we, once you take the faces off, it makes it a lot easier to, uh, to actually uh, paint them, sand them and everything, because otherwise you gotta empty all the drawers, you gotta stand them up. This way, the drawers are in good shape and we can clean out the inside of the drawers and the drawers will stay natural just the way they are right now. So, all right guys, well, we'll come back and show you, but right now we're just taking handles off, putting the old hardware, cause she's going back with new hardware, keeping all the drawer screws in a Ziploc bag. I think we're organized. Now it's just a matter of getting started. So here we are, uh, we are fully engaged in this project at this point in time. So what you're looking at here is we have definitely started uh, the dismantling project. We removed everything from the cabinets. Uh, we took all of the doors off and as we took doors off, we numbered and labeled them accordingly so that we would know where they could go back. We actually took the hardware from each door put it in its own private Ziploc bag that was also numbered to match the door. So that way, when we go back to install these, we know exactly what hinges went where. We also labeled the hinges like A and B for upper lower um, so that we could definitely get them back in place. Hopefully by doing this, it will require basically no adjustment Hopefully everything will just go in existing holes, line back up, and we're off to the races. So then, once we got everything out of here, we proceeded 
to come back and uh, lightly sand uh, all of the cabinets. Luckily, our cabinets were in good shape, so we just used a uh, 400 grit super fine or ultra fine sandpaper, came back using sanding blocks or uh, a little DeWalt handheld sander, and pretty much got everything going. We taped uh, some of the lips, as you can see, which will be painted. We are not going to paint the inside of the cabinets or the drawers. We're just going to do the door faces and uh, the cabinets. So, but here's the biggest problem. Man, what a mess. So when we started laying all of this out, there is like 60 some odd door faces and drawers that have to be painted. Here's an example of where we marked it like I-4. So that was the island, the kitchen island, and that was number four going left to right. So uh, you can kind of see what we did. So we took all of the uh, door faces off and you can see this is G2, which is the game room, which is where we're at in here. So G2, one, two, that would be the door face for that drawer right there. So the same process in the game room here on that cabinet. But the problem is when you take everything out of your cabinets, oh my goodness. Look at this, we got drawers everywhere. You can see on the drawers where we took the faces off, we labeled the, uh, the drawer so that we know exactly where it is and how to come back. You can also see, here's an example of what we did. On the back of the hinges, we wrote the actual location. So that's G2, so that's in the game room. That's the second drawer, and you notice that one has a B on it, which means it's the bottom hinge. A is the top hinge, B is the bottom hinge. So we got all of the hardware labeled. Man, 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 what a process. All right, so what is the plan of attack? Well, let's see. These cabinets over here, you can see a while back we did, and we actually hand painted those cabinets. Hey, there's Kimber. Uh, but so the plan of attack this time around, because there's so many drawer faces and cabinet doors and there's so much visibility, we're gonna actually paint this section of the cabinets by hand, just because all we're really doing is the faces that are on here. You got a little bit of panels on the end. So we're gonna paint all of this by hand because if we were to spray this, it would require a tremendous amount of prep work as far as getting the plastic in place, blocking off the house. This is an open floor plan. So we're gonna do this section by hand, just like we did those. But then we're gonna set up a paint booth out in the garage to actually spray the 60 some odd pieces of uh, doors, cabinet faces, and everything else. So major, major undertaking. Now that we're into this, I can see why a quote to have your cabinets painted could cost as much as $5,000 for a kitchen this size. Uh, at the moment, we're all in for about $500 and all of the paint and miscellaneous supplies. I'm sure there'll be some uh, additional stuff we'll need along the way, but you know, if we can do it ourselves for $750 and get a better result, because I do think the devil's in the detail and we are taking our time. Um, we've came back on the sanding here, let me tell you. We've been in this house 24 years and uh, the amount of, I know you thought your cabinets were pretty clean, but until you get face to face with them and start looking, you know, around the, the uh, stove and area, you know, there was uh, some grease on the cabinets built up over time, you know, around the dishwasher and around the sink and the trash can. Yeah, there's just wear and tear on cabinets, stuff you don't even think about uh, that accumulates over almost a quarter of a century. So, all right, more to follow. Just wanted to give you an update on where we're at. So here you can just kind of see some of the prep work that went in. Notice how we put the uh, construction paper or the painter's paper on the floors. We didn't want to get any uh, splatter. You can see we started the process of putting primer on the cabinets. And what we actually did, we put two coats of primer on the base cabinets. You notice we took all the doors off. So it's just the frames. The other thing we did was we mask and tape the inside of the cabinets because we were not going to paint the inside. 
So uh, a lot of prep work went into just getting ready for this. But you can see once we get a coat of primer on there, it's already starting to change the appearance of the kitchen. And uh, we follow through with two coats of primer. Uh, the kitchen island, we decided to go black. We went with the Sherwin-Williams caviar. Ooh, doesn't that sound expensive? Anyway, it's a uh, flat satin black paint. Uh, but it ties in very well with the uh, granite countertops that we have. And it kind of offsets the uh, kitchen, gives a little uh, contrast. So the base cabinets are done. We put two coats of primer, two coats of paint, and now we're moving on. So that was a huge milestone to get to that point because now we could take up all of the uh, construction, we could clean the kitchen up, and at least we could function at this point. So you can notice I'm starting to put some of the drawers back in. We don't have the faces on the drawers, but at least the kitchen is functional at this point. And uh, there's the uh, game room uh, bar. And now on to the doors. And let me tell you, this was a huge project. Uh, when you look at the drawer fronts and the cabinet doors, I mean, we had doors all over this house. So we set up a makeshift uh, painting station in the living room. I put three folding tables together. Uh, and basically it allowed us to come in here. We were gonna spray paint these originally, but it's 100 degrees in Texas. It was too hot to work outside. And with our schedule, what we decided to do was a little bit of a hybrid method. And we did this in our living room a while back and it, the results turned out great. So we got a high-end paintbrush and we used a paintbrush to actually paint the uh, angles and the edges of the cabinet doors, all of the routered edges, we used a paintbrush. Then on the flat surfaces, we used a small three inch foam roller. And I forgot the name of the company, but they make a foam roller specifically for cabinet doors. It's a real dense foam, uh, really makes a very uh, smooth surface. Uh, it leaves very little uh, texture behind, if you will. What little texture is left behind actually uh, wets out. And uh, so it's kind of a closed foam top roller. So uh, basically, uh, you can see my wife here, she's actually coming through and she's uh, getting paint in all of the little crooks and crannies. We also took a little uh, painter's caulk and filled in around some of these uh, joints on the doors uh, just to make for a smooth paintable surface. So there you go. And now she's coming back and she's using that little foam roller. Very, very, very light pressure and just hitting the flat surfaces. And the results really turn out very nice. Uh, not only that, but it speeds up the painting process. You don't get the uh, brush marks that you would normally see when you uh, paint a door. Took us six weeks working on this. Keep in mind, my wife and I both work. So we're, my wife was only able to do this on the uh, weekends. Notice in this picture, we got new bar stools for the kitchen and things are starting to come together. So this little kitchen makeover, uh, I don't know what it would cost. You can see we got cabinet doors going back on. We also changed the hardware. I bet if you had to pay a painter to do this job, it would be five, six, seven thousand uh, dollars We were into this job for probably under $700, including hardware and paint. And man, what a difference it made. But you just gotta take your time. Uh, our deal was, hey, if it takes us two months to do it, it's gonna take two months but we're gonna take our time and paint a few doors every night. Uh, I did a lot of the prep work, the sanding and getting things ready. My wife did all of the actual painting of the doors. She was a trooper and did an excellent job, but together uh, we got it all back together. Uh, and it, I think the results turned out pretty good. So it was a relatively inexpensive kitchen makeover. Uh, once again, being in the house 20 plus years, it really updated the kitchen, changed the appearance. Uh, would it be nice to change the floor and everything else? Yeah, but you know, then you're talking five, six, seven, eight, ten, twelve thousand dollars, and uh, you know what's the saying? Money's tight, times are hard. Thank you, Joe Biden. Uh, elections have consequences. Oh, wait a minute, I wasn't supposed to say that. Uh, but anyway, there you go. So. Uh, and look at this, we took these doors with the glass, I took the glass out, uh, totally uh, painted the doors, put the glass back in, put new silicone around it to hold the glass. And all in all, the kitchen uh, had a nice little makeover. And uh, I think we're ready uh, for another 10 or 15 years. As always, glory be to God, and thanks for watching.